Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to play for you. International star Prince Tuiteka from Tuhoi performed around the world with the Māori Volcanics and as a solo artist. After he came back home, he made history when E. Paul became the first song in Te Reo to reach number one on the New Zealand charts. And I would like to sing for you. It's a sort of a lovey dovey sort of song. You know, Ngoi Pefairangi. She made up, she made up the, the Maori words. It's called E. Paul. Baby Orchestra. I was the youngest, so, you know, nine then, and uh, I don't know how old was the oldest. Must be 17 maybe. And three saxophones, four saxophones, and I think it's three guitars and drums and banjos. Anything we could grab, but it was good. I wish, you know, I, I really wish I had a tape recorder in those days that I could listen to it now. You know, all the disco music like. Gay Gordons and Walls and <laughs> and Foxtrots. Oh. <laughs> it was really it's a great childhood, you know, I think back now I I you know, I still remember a lot of it. It's really good. It was so much to do. You know, ploughing potatoes, and it was all fun and, I suppose, part of growing up. Mm. We had always had a lot to do, riding horses and whatever, you know. Grow all our potatoes here and, and, and corn, and, and of course, uh, the plough was nearly three times my size, and used to knock me over, you know, sort of trying to hang on to it and all over, but, you know, because the, 
everybody sort of chip in and we get all the other relations to come and give us a hand. So, and just down there is another creek where we you know, dig a hole and put all the corn in it and we have rotten corn and next door to it is potatoes and, you know, rotten potatoes. I mean, you know, well, we call it rotten, but I suppose it smells, but it tastes beautiful. I hardly went to school. I, <laughs> I used to remember, I remember, you know, I go to school and then I just go down the paddock here. I stay there all day and then, and then come back and tell the old lady that I've been to school. But that's where I've been, just in the paddock waiting when school's finished, I come home. So we used to walk around with this old, old radio, you know, beat it up radio, it was just, just going, you can hear the sound. And I used to listen to it, and or I had a cousin, and him and I used to sort of uh, have a competition of trying to, to outdo one another, to impersonate Louis Armstrong, Nat King Cole, and all that. So my childhood, I was doing impressions. And uh, I think my, I don't know, I call it my, my dry humor, or my humor, uh, and my father is, he has a humour like that, you know, real dry, but you you got to laugh because it's dry. Actually, he taught me a lot, especially the saxophone, that was his name. The old lady wanted to send me to, um, uh, you know, college, but I wouldn't go because I want to go and make some money. So I went to work, when I turned 15, I went to the forestry and was there for um, 12 months and some friends came along with the circus. They said, oh, I'm going to Australia. When? Oh, a couple of weeks' time. They said, oh, can, I, can you get me a job? So I saw the boss and got a job with Worth Circus and away we went to Australia. Well, my mate, his mother, got the police and he got him off, you know, off the ship and uh, he couldn't go. But I, when I got to Sydney, I rode back uh, I'm in Australia, but it's too late, I'm there. <laughs> His big break came when he joined the Māori Volcanics. Here he is with none other than Billy T. James. Volcanics, he entertained audiences in over 30 countries. Then, too, he formed his own band, made up of young musicians from back home. Gone with the wind. <laughs> 